Hello, I'm Minnesota State Senator Glenn Grunhagen, and I'm coming to you today on what I believe to be a critical issue, and that is what causes division and strife in America. We see more than what we have seen for decades, and I'd like to give some insight into that. There are only two primary worldviews of physical death and their historical and current conflict on our values, laws, and government. Much of the strife in America can be explained by discussing these two worldviews. First, I'll start with what is a worldview? A worldview is a lens that influences how we see the world, including government, society, and other people. It is how humans interpret reality. Worldviews answer this critical question. What is the origin of sickness, disease, pain, suffering, aging, and death? There are only two worldview answers. Is it a means by which life and human beings came into existence? In our society, we call that macroevolution. Now, we need to define macroevolution different from microevolution. Macroevolution is one animal changing into another and that ultimately humans evolve from an ape-like creature. Microevolution is the difference between within a kind. So you have all types of dogs, big, small, large, all colors of dogs, but they're still dogs. Dogs do not give birth to pigs. Pigs don't give birth to rabbits, and rabbits don't give birth to raccoons, okay? It just doesn't happen. So we agree on microevolution, we disagree on macroevolution, which has huge scientific holes. The question is again, is it a means by which human beings came into existence, that's macroevolution, or is it a consequence imposed by a divine creator? So does sickness, disease, pain, suffering, aging, and death is it a consequence rather than a means? That is the question answered by worldviews. Now I'll give you one more illustration. When you attend a funeral, take a look at the process that affected them. Sickness, disease, pain, suffering, aging, and death. Ask yourself the question, did that process bring them into existence or did it drive them out of existence? That's the ultimate question. And remember, these two worldviews are parallel lines, and parallel lines never cross. Again, a lot of people convolute them and try to use some for both sides, but they're distinct worldviews with consequences for our society. On the uh, macroevolution worldview, it is a man-centered with moral relativism, everybody deciding what's right and wrong in their own eyes, where government becomes God and man equals God. This is a government-imposed religion of atheism. Now again, is atheism a religion? Well, our US Supreme Court, and you can do the research, has made numerous legal decisions over the years identifying atheism as a religion. It's also called secular humanism, which we'll get into later. If uh, sickness, disease, pain, suffering, aging, and death is a consequence, that creates a God-centered with a belief in a creator and results in rule of law and moral absolutes, which is greatly uh, missing in our current society. What is the impact of a U.S. legal decision by the Supreme Court? Well, the U.S. Supreme Court initiated removal of the Judeo-Christian God from our education system in 1962 in the Engel versus Vitale case, where a ruling was made that removed prayer from our public schools. An excellent resource for those of you who'd like to research this issue as far as atheism being a religion and how it's affected our educational system, this book can be ordered on the internet. It's Clergy in the Classroom. It contains the uh, Supreme Court decisions that atheism is a religion, also secular humanism, and it's authored by Dr. David Noble. So you can order this online. It's relatively inexpensive. It's an excellent resource. As a result of the U.S. Supreme Court decision in 1962, Darwinian evolution and atheistic psychology formally entered our U.S. educational system. 
so what pe I want people to understand is as we kick God and prayer and the Ten Commandments out the front door of our educational system, the atheistic psychologists came in the back door of the, of the public school with if it feels good, do it. Here are some of the key atheistic psychologists who influenced our educational system. The first is Dr. A. Maslow, who developed the pyramid of needs and self-actualization. There are spiritual aspects to self-actualization from the atheistic religion standpoint. From the Judeo-Christian standpoint, we're to die to ourselves, serve God, and help others. A. Maslow's philosophy is to think about self first and everything else second. Then we had atheist Dr. Carl Rogers, who promoted the feeling-centered decision-making into our educational curriculum. If you want to find out some of the concerns about this, an excellent resource is the Child Protection League. And also in our educational system, they're promoting social emotional learning. What that means is feelings trump truth and what you think and what you know. So these psychologists brought feelings primary, thinking and knowing and, and talking about truth secondary in our society and that had devastating consequences in our society and also our educational system. B.F. Skinner was also a behaviorist and a social philosopher and an atheist. This only names a few. Another atheistic psychologist was Dr. Sigmund Freud, the founder of Psychoanalyst, the id, the ego, and the superego, whose philosophy was based on sexual perversion. Another major influence on our educational system was atheist John Dewey, author of the Humanist Manifesto 1, 2, and possibly 3. It is basically the Bible of atheism. It embraces macroevolution as a theory of origin. It believes in abortion. It believes in a one-world government ad nauseum. You can order these off the internet and read them for yourself. Now let's contrast the worldview belief in a creator who has had a profound impact on our world. Looking at the founders of modern science and technology, their common denominator was that they believed they were thinking God's thoughts after him. You can also, another excellent resource is if you get a chance to visit or see a documentary on the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C and there will be additional information on the influence of the Judeo-Christian ethic and its development of uh, Western uh, civilization, both in Europe and here in America. I'd like to cover just two scientific laws that confirm there is a creator. There's a host of other laws, but we'll just use these two. The first law is the law of cause and effect. In other words, for every effect, there's a greater cause. So let's say you see a computer, you've never met anyone who made the computer, but somebody made the computer. Would you believe that wind, rain, time, and chance over millions of years blew a computer into existence? Well, that's really at the heart of the macroevolution versus creator controversy. In other words, we all agree on the scientific facts. What we disagree is on the interpretation of those facts and whether or not the interpretation fits the scientific narrative. The other thing that confirms that there's a creator is that life only begets life. This was developed by Louis Pasteur uh, in France who was considered to be the founder of modern medicine. In other words, you never see life come from non-life and yet this is a religious tenet of macroevolution that if you look at non-life long enough, eventually life will come out of it. Well, Louis Pasteur proves that's a scientific impossibility. Even today, they've never been able to do that. Life always begets life. Therefore, you had to have a what? A life giver, a creator. Those are scientific principles. Now, I've got a bill introduced at the Capitol to actually teach that in our educational system. Unfortunately, I can't get a hearing with the Democrats in control. On this slide, I've listed a partial list of the scientists who laid the foundation for modern science. And again, 
they, were, they saw themselves as thinking God's thoughts after them. So they believed in a creator. That's the origin of modern science. Unfortunately, atheism has replaced that in many cases across our country. And they're using what was developed and the foundation by uh, individuals who believed in a creator and they're now using atheism as that interpretation. So if you like civilization and you like technology, you should support the idea of teaching our children about a creator, because that laid the foundation for not only technology and innovation, it laid the foundation for our educational system, where you addressed knowledge and truth first and feeling second. Feelings are important, but they need to be limited by truth and what you think and what you know. That's what our education system used to be based on. Unfortunately, atheistic psychology has completely reversed that in, our, in not only our K-12 system, but also our higher ed system. One additional person I didn't list on there is Albert Einstein. El we all know who Albert Einstein is. He believed that the universe was a watch Therefore, you had to have a watchmaker, okay? Again, the laws of cause and effect. You had the earth, you had the universe, someone had to create that. Even Albert Einstein believed that. Unfortunately, that is denied by many of the atheistic scientists in our world today and, and not taught to our children as it properly should be. Okay, the founders of modern science and technology all believed they were thinking God's thoughts after him. I wanted to repeat that. That is the basis of modern science, healthcare, and also technology. If you like civilization and the benefits of those things, then you need to understand that a creator was the base, the belief in a creator was the basis for bringing that to us. The belief in a Judeo-Christian creator influenced our founding fathers as they developed the Declaration of Independence, the US Constitution, and our limited form of government, resulting in, here in our country, unparalleled liberty, prosperity, a value of human life from conception to natural death, innovation, and civilization. If you like those things, we need to teach our children there was a creator. Now, we don't want to mandate everybody has to be a, a Methodist or a, a, a Catholic or a Baptist or whatever or Lutheran. What, we, what our founding fathers said is that is freedom of religion, okay, which is in our Constitution. But we do need to acknowledge the idea that there is a lawgiver and a creator based in the Judeo-Christian God and that he set forth certain laws and principles. And if we cooperate with them as a society, will receive huge blessings, which we have, from the people before us. And if not, there's going to be uh, devastating judgmental consequences. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the Judeo-Christian, under the Judeo-Christian creator, is the human race as a biological scientific fact. You know, under Darwinian evolution, we're different races. And that simply has been disproved scientifically. In the 90s, and you can research this, they cracked the genetic code uh, of human beings. What the Darwinian evolutionist scientists were hoping that they would find a natural selection gene that could change one animal into another. Guess what? There is no natural selection gene. You know what that means? That means that we as humans are one race, the human race. Now we're different ethnic groups, all right? but we're one race, the human race. So the whole idea of different races, races and racism, racism all come out of the idea of macro uh, Darwinian evolution and the religion of atheism. Our founding fathers did not come up with this idea by themselves. The seeds were laid decades or even centuries prior to the discovery of America in Europe. One of those books that was written that laid the seeds for our founding fathers was by Samuel Rutherford in 1644. It was titled Lex Rex. The book con contrasted Lex Rex versus Rex Lex. And it also talked about absolute power corrupting absolutely. Up to that time when this was published, it was thought that the king 
could make the law, and that basically everybody else had to agree it with it, all right? So the king, Rex Lex, the king is law. What Samuel Rutherford said is, there is a creator who gave us the Judeo-Christian laws. Therefore, even the king is under those laws and is subject to accountability to them. So that's Lex Rex. So the law is king. That idea had huge consequences in Europe for the ruling class who believed in Rex Lex. They were king, they could make the law. Remember back on a few slides ago where man equals God? You had many kings and dictators and rulers thinking they were God, okay? Or they could be God. What Samuel Rutherford did was say, wait a minute, those kings and rulers, their decisions have to be judged in relationship to the ultimate creator and lawgiver. Now, do you think he was well received in Europe when he wrote that book? He was heavily persecuted, but again, the ruling class that believed in Rex Lex, the king is law, they hated that book. And yet that was a major influencer on our founding fathers and our Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and our form of government. Another uh, excellent resource that you can look to provides information to show how our fathers, founding fathers were influenced by the Judeo-Christian ethic and creator is Wall Builders. I have that listed there. Another excellent book but that was written by Dr. Francis Schaeffer was a Christian manifesto. You can order that off the internet if you'd like. It's an excellent read. And again, there's a host of other resources, but I'm just putting these out for your information. The worldview of the, Dar of the theory of Darwinian macroevolution has also had a profound impact on our world. The worldview has resulted in many negative forms of government. It has been the basis for communism, Nazism, fascism, Marxism, all based on atheism and that man equals God, who's ever in charge. Dictatorships have resulted with little freedom or prosperity except for a few elites. It falsely teaches that man is nothing more than an evolved animal and can be treated as such. It is anti-science, and I'll cover some of that in the next few slides. It results in the murder of over 100 million innocent human lives in the 20th century. So these forms of government, when you disagree with it, guess what happens? You lose freedom of speech, they persecute their, their political enemies, and they ultimately kill the people that disagree with them. They believe that man will never have to answer to a creator for his actions. This is an important point. All governments in the world are founded on some form of a religious ideals and values. That is simply a fact. No government is free from the influence of religious ideals and values. It's just whose values? The religion of atheism or something else or the religion of the Judeo-Christian creator, which is what our country was founded on. Charles Darwin, by the way, was a white supremacist and a racist. He also supported eugenics, that is the survival of the fittest. Darwin wrote two books. One everybody's heard of is The Origin of Species, but the second book he wrote was The Descent of Man. In the second book, Darwin stated, and this is a direct quote, at some point, not very distant, by measured by centuries, the civilized European race of men will almost certainly exterminate and replace throughout the world the savage races. Darwin goes on to name uh, three of those what he considers to be savage races. The Negro, the Australian Pygmy, and the Gorilla would one day be exterminated by the higher evolved races. So Darwin was a white supremacist and a racist individual. And yet that theory of macroevolution is what we're teaching to our children. So what do you think we're going to get out of that in our educational system? We're going to get uh, racism and white supremacy, only it's by the Democrats, Governor Walls and Biden, rather than the Republicans, because they're the ones that support uh, this theory of origin. One of Darwin's fanatical disciples was Margaret Sanger. 
She was the founder of Planned Parenthood and a strong advocate of eugenics. Here is a direct quote from Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. We do not want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. That's Margaret Sanger. Now, Planned Parenthood today denounces Mar Margaret Sanger. She was a white supremacist and a racist. And yet, if we look at the city of New York, according to the published reports, they abort more black babies than are born in the city of New York. That's white supremacy, that's racism, and that's what Governor Walz and the Democrats supported legislation last session and put into law here in the state of Minnesota, and we'll get into more of that on, on, on future slides. Eugenics was popular in the US and Europe for, from approximately 1907 through 1940. Hitler was a disciple of eugenics, and we know what he did to other people and denigrated them. Other followers of eugenics are Mao, Stalin, et cetera, I could go on. Today, eugenics are being popularized in the US by abortion and the transgender ideology. The treatment of transgenderism is with cross-sex hormones, puberty blockers, and mutilating surgery, resulting in the sterilization of its victims. These are the laws that the state of Minnesota passed last session to make Minnesota a gender-affirming care, in other words, mutilating surgery for minors. I had an amendment to prohibit this type of treatment on minor children who do not fully realize what is being done to them. And the Democrats opposed it. So Governor Walz could have stepped in, he did not. Doing this to children is a crime. And an excellent resource is there's, it's called Gays Against Groomers. These are a group, group of homosexuals and lesbians who oppose transgender treatment on minor children and say you are simply grooming them for sexual exploitation. You can check that out on the internet. The other thing I'd like to talk about is abortion, which again is being used as a white supremacy and racist uh, technique against uh, minorities, especially blacks. And what I'd like to say is this, especially to the doctors who are performing abortion, late-term abortions especially, and transgender ideology. You know, Bernard Nathanson founded the National Abortion Rights League way back in the 60s. He oversaw in New York over 75,000 abortions. He also personally uh, performed over 5,000 abortions. But guess what? Bernard Nathanson became pro-life later on in his life. He realized what he was doing to both the women and the children, and the scales came off his conscience and his eyes. Now, God rest his soul, he passed away in 2011. But before he did, he created a documentary, which you can find on the internet, called The Silent Scream. And it shows a medical instrument going after a late-term abortion baby in a child's womb and how the child is trying to get away from that instrument and also ultimately succumbs to it. This is infanticide. This is what your Democratic Governor Walls and the Democratic uh, majorities in the House and the Senate support. Also, the Biden administration supports this. And I have more to say about it at a future slide. Okay, on this slide, I'd like to contrast a few of the results between Darwinian evolution and a belief in the Judeo-Christian uh, creator versus the belief in Darwinian evolution. First, let's look at some of the results. Under the Judeo-Christian creator as the lawgiver, civilization, Western civilization came about. We resolve our differences peacefully with justice and the rule of law. Now let's look at Darwinian evolution, what their results are. The results are barbarism, violence, riots, resulting in death and destruction. Now I ask you, what have we seen in our society recently, especially, is which view is being played out, okay? 
I'll, uh, I'll let you decide and think that through. The other thing under a Judeo-Christian creator, we have a protection for children. Under Darwinism, we have the exploitation of children. We encourage transgender identity and transition. And in fact, the Democrats passed in Minnesota last session, HF 146. It even says that if, a, if parents won't allow their child, minor child, to transition, the state or court can take it away, take the child away and have this mutilating surgery and treatment on that child anyway. Think about that. That is not based on parental rights. That is based on the state can decide what's right and wrong for your child with no input from you as far as the consequences. The next thing under the Judeo-Christian creator, we have a respect for and valuing of human life. Of course, on the Darwinian evolution, we get abortion and the devaluation of life, pornography, which objectifies women and children, and sex ed as education in our public school. Under HF1, passed by Governor Walz and the Democrats in the state of Minnesota, you can now abort a child right up to birth. Okay? Right up to birth. It's much worse than Roe v. Wade. And if the child survives abortion, we used to have a law that said you have to give it life-saving medical care. They repealed that and replaced it with comfort care. So even if the child survives a late-term abortion, you no longer have to give it life-saving medical care. You can just be nice to it till it dies. That's infanticide. That comes from a wrong worldview. The other thing I just like to say about abortion and pornography, and I'm talking to the ladies here, abortion and pornography sends a certain sends a message to a certain percentage of men to sexually exploit women and children. So, ladies. If you want your sexual exploitation to stop, you should oppose abortion and you should oppose pornography because it dehumanizes and objectifies you. It was seven men, not seven women, that legalized abortion under Roe v. Wade. So if you want to have some respect and value in our society, we need to stop promoting these two ideas that objectify and degrade our women and children. Please think about it. To illustrate further the idea that our country was founded on the Judeo-Christian principles, again, to reinforce the idea that we were founded on the Judeo-Christian creator, listen to the comment from one of our founding fathers, John Adams, who was our second president. Here's a direct quote. Our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Are we going down a path of being moral and religious and acknowledgement of the creator in this country? Or are we going down the path of atheism and Darwinian evolution, which is bringing about our own destruction in many cases? Here's another further, further illustration that our country was founded on a Judeo-Christian Creator. 49 out of 50 state constitutions acknowledge God, Lord, or Creator as the author of our civil and religious liberties. In Minnesota here, the preamble states, we the people of the state of Minnesota, grateful to God for our civil and religious liberties and desiring to perpetuate its blessings and secure the same to ourselves and our posterity, meaning children, do ordain and establish this constitution. So every state constitution except for one acknowledges, like the Declaration of Independence, that our civil and religious liberties came from God. That's why we're a constitutional republic based on God-given rights. We're not a mob democracy. We are a republic. That's why we have an electoral college, so that the small population states are not dominated by the high population states. Our Senate is based on that, where North Dakota gets two senators and California gets two senators. But in terms of population, I think North Dakota gets one congressperson. Uh, California gets 50 to 60 congresspeople. So in the Senate, 
North Dakota and the lower population states can actually block legislation that discriminates against them. That has been one of the foundational beliefs of our republic, and yet the left and Democrats want to replace that with mob democracy, which will simply empower large population states. On this slide, which worldview do the two major political parties in America generally support? Most Republicans generally support the Judeo-Christian worldview and its results. Most Democrats generally support the religious atheistic Darwinian worldview and its results. The conflict between these two worldviews can be seen in the U.S. and state government policies and, lo and governing laws. It's in healthcare, in welfare, immigration, transportation, environment, especially the global warming debacle, which is anti-science and simply empowering the few uh, and the rest of us have to pay for that. Plus, they want to control our lives through this global warming scam and scare. Then we have gun control. The Democrats in Minnesota, we have uh, passed two new laws to restrict gun owners' right to own guns. Again, we have over 43 statutes already in the state of Minnesota restricting access to guns. The Democrats passed two more for law-abiding citizens who own guns. Now, you know, I stood on the Senate floor and said, you know, if we look at your actions rather than what you say, you let the criminals go free, they got a committee to study cashless, cashless bail, and they let the criminals back out on the street to make chaos, and then uh, they restrict legal gun owners' rights. I said, why don't you just come out and say what you really want as Democrats? You want to take legal gun owners' guns away. You should punish the criminal and protect society and law-abiding citizens. It's the opposite of what Governor Walz and the Democrats are doing, including the Biden administration. Then we go to uh, legalizing drugs. We talked about marijuana, redefining marriage, economics, and there's other social issues. You can also research a bill passed in Minnesota called HF-16 and signed by the governor. It bans conversion therapy. Each worldview has religious beliefs and tenets. My advice to you is uh, Joshua 24, 15. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Another statement I like is from Dr. Henry Morris. Neither is our great Judeo-Christian God very far from any one of us in space or time. Here's a list of some additional resources. You can go for the, to the Center for the American Experiment that's here in Minnesota. Excellent articles and research on the economics uh, and how it, the laws passed affect private sector economics. Then there's Chake Charge, uh, Minnesota. This is a great website for learning what's going on in education. In fact, they put out a documentary, Chaos in the public schools, and it's well worth watching. Another excellent resource here in Minnesota is Alpha News. They put out excellent articles, both in law, education, and in society in general, and what the ramifications are, what our state laws, our state legislature passed. I would strongly encourage you to watch the documentary, What is a Woman? It exposes the lies and deceit anti-science, anti-biology agenda of the transgender movement. Another excellent resource is a book written by Dr. David Brees, God rest his soul, Seven Men Who Rule the World from the Grave. And it basically shows how individuals who believed in atheism, some of whom I've mentioned here, uh, how their philosophy has now come to dominate almost all aspects of our world with the resulting negative consequences. Another excellent resource uh, to expose the lies and deceit of uh, the global warming or green movement, I call it the greed movement, is why scientists disagree about global warming. It's authored by three distinguished scientists and is available through the Heartland Institute. Another excellent book is Unstoppable Global Warming by Dr. Fred Singer. 
What it shows in that book, it shows that there is a 1500 year cycle on Earth that can be documented of warming and cooling all across the world. And the scientific facts of geology confirm that. Again, we agree on the, on the facts, scientific facts. What we disagree on is the interpretation of the facts. Okay, keep driving your gasoline car. We, according to published reports, we have over 400 years of natural gas and oil here in the United States. We can be energy independent and not fund the terrorists, which we see the results of that. One other person I'd mention is uh, Mark Levin, constitutional attorney. His latest book is The Democratic Party Hates America. He's written a number of books, one book on judges and the corruption that's in our judicial system here in America. One last resource that just came out a book was written, Controligarchs, okay? And that book exposes the billionaires in our country and around the world that want to micromanage our lives in terms of where we live, how much energy we use, gas, you've heard about gas stoves wanting to be banned. And these individuals are Bill Gates, who wants to control uh, your food supply. Then you have Mark Zuckerberg, who uh, also wants to micromanage our lives in almost every area. You have Jeff Bezos, George Soros, and uh, his anti-American and anti-human agenda. And finally, Klaus Straub from the World Economic Forum. These individuals are exposed in this new book, which you can locate on the internet, and they show their agenda is for us to own nothing to rent, and that they, these elitists, fly around in private jets, and the rest of us will be serfs under their anti-American, atheistic, Darwinian worldview that they're promoting. They need to be exposed. This book does an excellent job of that. In the area of sex ed that's taught in our public schools, and again, I was a school board member for 16 years, there's a couple ex excellent resources. One is, you're, you're teaching my child what? You can order that, and there's a host of other uh, resources and organizations. And here's a sex ed book I can't even read out of it. It's perfectly normal. It just gives sexual perversions as normal and optional to our children. This has been used or is being used in the state of Minnesota. What you have to understand, when you expose young people, especially young boys, to pornography and obscenity, which again, is being used in our public schools. Our pornography and obscenity laws do not apply to our educational system. That's one of the problems. But when you expose uh, young people and minors, especially young boys, to this type of information, it sets off a chemical reaction in their brain called dopamine. And dopamine is one of the primary things that promotes addiction. So what you're doing is setting up pornographic addiction in these young people with this explicit sex ed versus teaching abstinence until marriage and faithfulness in marriage. And what happens is when you become addicted to pornography, you have to have harder and harder core pornography to feed the addiction. And at a certain point, a, small, a percentage of, of men primarily will begin to become level three sex predators. They will actually hunt and rape and kill women and children. That's what you're doing in our educational system. It's based on macroevolution, Darwinian evolution, and Dr. Alfred Kinsey, many of you haven't heard about that, but you can research him on the internet. And Hugh Hefner was a big disciple of Dr. Alfred Kinsey, which weakened and in some case replaced our obscenity and pornography laws. Please, please, for the sake of our children, oppose this explicit sexual perversion to our children in our public schools. Thank you for listening, and you can help me by donating to my campaign. You can donate $50 per person, $100 per couple, and get a 100% refund here in the state of Minnesota. Uh, you can give additional money, however, that is not refundable. We will be mailing you a form with an envelope 
to get that refund from the state. It takes a couple of weeks and you get the $100 back. Please, if you care about this message, and there's a lot of additional information that I'd like to do, help me with this and appreciate your support. When you go to the website, I would strongly encourage you to learn more uh, about ending racism in America. You can click on the resource tab under publish articles and read my article I wrote, A Manifesto to End Racism in America. The last thing I'd like to say is, there's an excellent book on the concerns about psychology, Destructive Trends in Mental Health, The Well-Intentioned Path to Harm. It's authored by the former president of the APA, American Psychological Association, and also a vice president of the APA. There are good psychologists, but basically what it says in this book is that talk therapy and giving people goals and work is the best way to straighten someone out mentally and emotionally. To go back over your past over and over and over again doesn't help. In fact, it can actually cause more problems. There's also an excellent chapter in here on labeling and drugging of the children. Again, you can order this book on the internet. With that, I know it's been a heavy subject, but remember, ladies and gentlemen, we've had dark tie times in our country in the past, during our Revolutionary War, during the Civil War, during the Depression, and I could go on. Yet, the fortitude and the principles of our Judeo-Christian foundation always brought us through that. It can bring us through again, but we cannot continue on the path that we're going on. There has to be a revival and a return to the principles that made this country great and will build a better future for ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren. God bless you and look forward to you participating in the political process to rejuvenate and put us on the right path again.